uh, please let me know if you able to see my screen this is our ESXi host that we installed 192.168.1.10 1, 1 1.100 and uh, we have already installed one Windows 10 operating system in this ESXi host and to do, today we will discuss about the uh, features or options which is available in virtual machines property before that if you have any question or doubt please let me know uh, because we need to start the, the next content next uh, services that we need to know sorry 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 uh, in last session we discussed about which topic yesterday we were talking about like um, networking and stuff right okay and today we need to start with the uh, vCenter server right Or if you have any question, please let me know about the previous topic. Today's agenda to configure vCenter server. So this is our agenda and in this topic we will discuss each and everything like the basic of vCenter server, why it is important, what are the prerequisites to install the vCenter services and we will also discuss about how we can manage the multiple ESXi hosts by using the single vCenter server. So this is our agenda, let me explain you from uh, scratch like why it is important and which types of uh, uh, options or services we will find in our vCenter server environment. So let's see start from very basic like as uh, in case of vCenter server why we need to use it then discuss about the hardware requirement then talk about the vCenter services so first topic is what is vCenter server second option about prerequisite you started recording, right? Sorry? Recording? Already started, no worry. Okay, yeah. Prerequisite and uh, how to install vCenter server. Last option about vCenter services. These all are the topics that we need to cover in our today's class. We'll try to complete each and everything. So let's talk from uh, very basic like what is vCenter server. So in single word you can say that if you have a multiple ESXi host like you establish up to 5 to 10 different ESXi host in our environment 
you want to control each and every ESXi by using the single page because what happened whenever we install ESXi host you need to connect your ESXi through the uh, private IP address of your ESXi host means if you have a multiple ESXi you need to use uh, IP address of each and every ESXi so I don't want to use the uh, different uh, um, IP address or different wizard to access our ESXi for example, in our case, we establish up to four different ESXi hosts like uh, the 192, 168.1.10, 1.20, 1.30, and 1.40, for example. The IP address of our vCenter server, it may be 192.168.1.100. And now, each and every vCenter ESXi host connected to the vCenter server Now, so we just need to access HTTPS colon 192.168.1.10 by using this particular IP address, 1.100 sorry, not 10. By using the IP address of vCenter server, we are able to control each and every SXI on single page. Like with the help of VCSA, we are able to access each and every ESXi host. Every ESXi you can connect with single VCSA. Like this. ESXi host 1, 2 and 3 and 4. So in single word you can say that vCenter server is the backbone of VMware virtualization because with the help of single vCenter server we are able to control or manage multiple ESXi host. This is our agenda. So, I hope you understand about the value and the theoretical part of vCenter server. Any question, any doubt, please let me know. This is all about the vCenter services. Now, second is important part is about the prerequisites. Or uh, you can say that about the hardware requirement. What are the prerequisites that uh, are required to establish our vCenter server? for vCenter installation so in case of vCenter server installation what are the prerequisites the first one you must need to establish one ESXi host with good configuration the minimum hardware required up to 14 gig of RAM Second, minimum 2 core of CPU, minimum 250 gig of hard drive, right, and ISO image are over file of vCenter server appliance. appliance. These all are the prerequisites. Second, another important part, you must need to connect your ESXi through domain computer. Means, you must need to install AD server. Without AD server, we are unable to set up our vCenter services. and your ESXi should be a part of domain. That's it. These all are the prerequisites. If you plan to install, you must need to configure domain. Domain should be associated with our ESXi host that we have already discussed how we can do that. Domain like as I created a domain with name of class.com for example. So your class.com should be connected with ESXi host and configure the DNS record configure DNS record to server operating system these all are the prerequisites if everything is okay can we proceed for the procedure let me know because it will take up to one hour to install the ESXi install the vCenter server minimum one hour required required 
if you have any doubt or question let me know no go ahead fine so i'm just going to set up so uh, need to know about the what are the prerequisites th that we have so we have a 1 year subsi i'm just going to con um, uh, make it 14 gig we have a domain controller so we will configure our domain to yes subsi fine so i'm just going to take the access of our uh, ESXi and our domain machine. This is our domain controller. Let me check the domain name, which is cloud. dot com. Sorry, the domain name is cloud. dot com. This one is our ESXi one dot thirteen. So I'm just going to convert our ESXi from. I'm just going to make it member of our domain controller. so how we can convert it let me check the gui access of our 1.13 select host go to the security and users I don't have that. Now, which is already connected with uh, cloud. dot com, right? So we have already converted it from uh, uh, convert. Uh, uh, we have already made it uh, our member of domain controller. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I I still need to watch that video and follow the practical. So. Do one thing. I'm just going to define you again, right? Okay. i'm just going to leave the domain and give you the proper step how you can connect your machine to domain controller how you can connect yes at site to domain okay thank you fine so now uh, i just uh, removed from uh, domain member so what you need to do make sure your yes at site host make sure the yes at site Our uh, domain machine should be contain a manual IP address means static IP address. So let me verify the IP address of our domain controller first. CMD IP config. The IP address of our uh, domain controller is one ninety two one sixty eight dot one dot fifteen. We need to configure it manually. NCPA dot CPL. Ethernet. Go to the properties. IPv4, it's already configured manually, so no need to make any changes. Cancel. Just back to the ESXi and make few changes in our IP address. Press F2. Type the password of your console. And we just need to click on Network Management IPv4. Uh, should be used static, right? Set a static IP address. Yes, we have already configured the static IP address. I just want to use the same IP address. Thirteen. Back to the DNS configuration. In the DNS configuration, you must need to provide the IP address of your uh, uh, domain machine. One dot fifteen. 
alternate 8.8.8 .8 .8. and the name of our host is esxi now fine another setting custom dns suffix so you can use the same name custom dns suffix same name esxi that's it what is that for it's custom suffix it's DNS. a it's a it's a display name you can see that it's a display name which is uh, help us to access our esxi host through the name You can use any name, it's up to you. Press escape and save it. This is the step first that you need to configure manual IP address and UPIN suffix name. Now, once you configure the manual IP address back to the ESXi uh, using GUI panel and open your inventory select the manage part in the manage just need to click security and users <laughs> under the security and users just need to click authentication and in authentication click domain join type the name of your domain like in our case we establish our domain with name of cloud.com let me verify one more time. Now it become a cloud.com. Back to the ESXi host. Type the username and password of domain controller. So in our case, we have already established administrator and you should provide the password. It is in progress, we just need to wait for a few minutes. Fine, so we successfully connected with our, uh, what we can say that, cloud.com. Now, this is first step. Second step, what we need to do, back to the domain controller. Verify the name of your ESXi. So in our case, our ESXi host name is esxi.cloud.com. This is the full name of our ESXi host. Back to the server machine means domain services, active directory services, tools, go to the DNS services. And in DNS, we just need to click forward lookup zone and verify your system detail. So yes, we are able to find ESXi 192.168.1.13 successfully connected. Select forward look, reverse lookup zone. You must need to create a record. Right click, go to the properties. Update your record again. Uncheck properties, check mark update apply okay refresh 13 is available with full name esxi host esxi.cloud.com it is mandatory because without dns resolution we are unable to install our vcenter server which is mandatory you can see that
please let me know if you have any question guys because it's really important for us before the installation of vCenter server you must need to perform these types of activity otherwise it may be create a problem and you are unable to install any server uh, any vCenter server is it fine please confirm Cool. Back to the ESXi. Verify the configuration. So in our case, uh, I think we have a uh, how much? We have a eight uh, six point five gig of RAM, right? And up to I think storage enough. We have a added three hundred gig of storage, and uh, CPU cores are available five point nine gigahertz. So we just need to increase the capacity of RAM. So how we can do that? Back to the ESXi host. Right click, setting. Change the RAM capacity. We just need to make it at least 14. But for this particular changes, you required to stop your ESXi. And now change it. I'm going to make it 14 point something. Yes. Everything is 5. 250 gig hard disk available. Now we are able to install the vCenter server. Proceed for installation. So you said minimum RAM is how much? Minimum RAM required 12 gig. And how much is what is the number? Uh, number twelve thousand something. Okay, because so I won't be able to perform this on my computer then, right? Uh, many the RAM size that you have? I have sixteen GB RAM. Uh, you are able to do that. Just create Sorry. one create one ESXi host with capacity of uh, you can say that with capacity of. Uh, 12 gig and install the vCenter server in our ESXi host. So I have to create another ESXi host. So, so what should be so right now? My total memory is 8 GB. Is that enough for the ESXi? No, you make it uh, 12 at least. Okay, and then I need to increase the storage as well because that's not enough. You, 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 you must need to increase it, yes. So I'll do 60 GB is enough, right? Make it 12 gig, just not 60. No, 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 the hard disk, the storage. For hard disk, you need to add uh, um, uh, at least 200 gig. So, because my computer just have six thirty six GB. No problem. It can no 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 no. Whenever we add the uh, virtual hard disk, um, no matter how much space have you in have you in your uh, base machine. Because in my case, I'm also using a, a one TB of hard drive, but I'm able to create up to two point five TB of hard drive. Okay, so you want me to create two hundred and fifty GB? You say. 250, yes, you need to add a 250 gig additional hard drive. Oh, yeah, it is successfully added. Yep. So, right now you're going to add another, you're creating another ESXi or you already have another? No, no, I'm just going to use the same ESXi. No need to create another uh, ESXi. Okay, because I thought for this practical we need multiple ESXs. Okay. Yes. Clear, can we proceed? So uh, we successfully increase our RAM size and now we can uh, uh, 
13.9 approximately 14 gig uh, drive 14 gig ram successfully connected with our ssi second step what we need to do we just need to download iso image i think i have already downloaded vmware appliance used to download the VMware appliance means VMware uh, vCenter appliance I'm able to provide us a link if you have it like a Google Drive link or something sure 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 well, let me check the link because you need to create our uh, uh, on account over our VMware and you can download let me upload it on Google Drive and share with you okay VCSA 6.5, vCenter Server 6.5, that means 2.34. And I have already installed one vCenter Server as well. center server appliance suite Can I ask you a question while you do something like, uh, while you're just browsing something? Actually, I'm just uh, checking. I have already downloaded uh, vCenter server appliance. Otherwise, uh, we need to download a new vCenter server. Just have a question. Uh, the storage I expanded. How do I refresh it so it gets refreshed in the ESXi? Because ESX still says the old numbers. No, no. You increase the same space, or you are adding another. Uh, so I did two hundred and fifty GB. New hard disk added, right? No, same hard disk. Uh, you just increase the same. Yes. Okay. Maybe while this downloads, can I share my screen? Oh, just, 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 just give me one minute. Yeah, yeah. just finish that, so. Yeah, I'm just going to download and meanwhile share your screen. I just made you present. Uh, my share is still good. Okay, there you go. Can you see my screen? Let me know. 
Yep. So if I go to my ESX side and if I right click settings, it says I have 250 GB, memory is 12 GB, and processor is 4. Great. Uh, could you please close it? Have you restart your virtual machine? It was powered off when I did it, right? Okay, great. No problem. So just uh, access the GUI. And then when I go in GUI, it still says I just have 5 GB. No, you need, just need to click increase capacity. Okay. Next. No, no, no. Click back. Uh, second one. Next. Next. You must need to use the entire space. Do not use customize. That's grayed out. That option is grayed out. Mm, could you please select so your partition? On the left. Oh, so I have to select. Select the unlocated oh. space. Yeah, this one. This one, right? Yes. How much you want to distribute? Same. Yeah, so. So these are the different partition of the drive. Select the free space, the free space which is available. 210 that's great that's great out i can't select anything other than vmfs uh, vmfs size is just 32 gb that we do one thing uh back to the esx side and stop the vm and sure and i'll tell you one thing but i have 26 gb free mm -hmm. both machines are powered off so you want to power off the ESX as well yeah, back to the ESX and powered off get done Okay, add a new hard drive with capacity of 250 gig. right? Correct. And then create a new virtual disk here or use existing? Create a new virtual And then split virtual disk into multiple files, right? Uh, correct. No problem. Proceed. Okay, so we see new two hard disks now. Now, re is, uh, start your ESX side. And there is no way we can add my another computer over here, right? Every time I have to go here. Sorry? If, you want to, if I want to open this Windows to a computer on this window, how would I do that? like this Windows 10 or Windows 12 machine on my ESXi, mm -hmm. how can I open VMware workstation right here? No, no. See, this is the panel of our ESXi and this one is our workstation. Both are different to each other. Okay, so there is no way I can open my Windows 12 machine on this window. No, not possible because you installed on your ESXi, not in uh, 
uh, workstation. Both are different to each other. One is hypervisor right. one, and another is hypervisor two. Okay, because I thought I saw you had it in No, no, no. I just came to the idea. And then I have one more question, and that must might be a very basic question for you, but then I should have asked earlier, but I'll show you. I am still confused between memory, processor, and stuff like this, this basic terminology. Because when it comes to processor and then this thing, it's still very confusing for me. I don't understand. Okay. <coughs> No worry, I'll explain about the use of this. Yeah, no. <laughs> RAM is fine, right? 12 GB? Enough, enough, enough. Now increase capacity. Uh, no, go to the new data center. New data center. Uh, click on the storage first. Click on the storage. Storage, storage. Yeah, this one. New data center. Data store. Type the name of your data storage. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, need to install uh, Active Active Domain Services. You need to install one server machine. Yeah, I already have that. I don't think it can work because it will create a problem. You always put your word server operating system in separate from ESXi, separate from vCenter server. That's I why that. always create so, al always create our server in separate. Okay, so so this is the data store where, where I have no, my ESXi no, no, host. No. I'm not talking and about the data center. The Windows server and Windows 10 both machines on this new data store then? We have a two different platform. One is workstation and second is ESXi. This is the panel of ESXi, right? And the ESXi yes. host that you install over a VMware workstation. So you need to install server 2012 on VMware workstation, not in ESXi host. You need to treat your server computer, you need to treat your domain machine as a physical computer. So, so that's what I'm saying, like our ESXi is on this one, right? Data store one? No, ESXi is available in our vCenter server. This is the, this one is the ESXi. This is workstation. And you need to install Windows Server 2012 on this ESXi host. On, on this particular workstation. Not in ESXi. Okay. Okay. Click on file. New. Create the server machine on this particular panel and install ADDS services. Yes. Select server 2012 ISO image.
this is mandatory to enter the key no no not required not required just need to provide the password It says there is already a machine installed on this. So I should delete it first, that file, I guess. Yeah, please, just need to clean the space. Uh, or maybe I should just go and delete this, this thing. Yeah, sure, yes, because they are consuming a lot of space. And even Windows 10, I, I can't install this way. Windows 10 is, um, no, no, no need to delete the Windows 10, just you delete the server operating system, that's it. Do I have to delete any files, you know, after delete that? Uh, it, maybe it automatically but, delete or otherwise you need to delete it manually. So what do you say? Uh, let's see, if it is deleted automatically, then... Okay, so I'll go back and then next. And then I pick the same location. Yeah, it's still not deleted. Maybe what I can do is I'll pick another location for now. At least that can tell me what, what uh, files are created. Here I should do, uh, this is Windows 12 machine. 40 gig is enough. And memory is 2 GB fine, right? Uh, 2 gig enough, yes. Okay, I know how to set up the Active Directory on this, I'll do that. Okay, just need to install the server and uh, then we'll guide you how to install AD services. Okay, sure. Oh, you know what, I can do that because I, I think that it's, it's in the videos. I don't want to waste your time and perhaps time either, but just wanted to make sure I'm doing it right, so. No problem, if you want to install it, just need to install and for the Active Directory, I'll guide you. Is it okay? Okay, okay sure. Okay, can I share my screen? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, please let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes, we can. Fine. So I'm going to show you the step how to install the vCenter server. Everything is okay. We successfully install ESXi host and make it member of uh, domain controller. So now everything is okay. What you need to do? The IP address of ESXi host is uh,
Okay, let me explain you about the uh, prerequisite that I set up for the vCenter server environment. This is our ESXi host, 14 gig of RAM, 200 gig of hard drive, and uh, the IP address of ESXi is 13. This is our do domain controller, which is help us to manage the what we can say that manage the part of our name resolution. What you need to do, download one tool. The tool name is VCSA 6.5. The capacity of this particular tool is uh, 3.71 GB. The total capacity of 3. Point something GB. Download it and right click, click mount. VCSA UI installer, double click. Open 34 bit and proceed to install. This is the installer. So, where are you installing this? Like on your local machine or? On, on ESXi host. 13 gig of ESXi host. This is the way it will ask you to provide the path of your ESXi host. Right, we just open the installer, vCenter server appliance 6.5 installer, install. We need to follow two stages, one stage, just click next. I accept the terms and licenses, next. Yes, we need to proceed with first option, vCenter server embedded. No need to divide separately, click next. This is the panel. Provide the IP address of your ESXi host. So our ESXi host IP address is 192.168.1.13. Is it clear? Yeah, well, I'm still confused. Like, where are you doing this? I know you said ESXi host, but ESXi host. So in the so in the server 2012, you're doing this or what machine? Any machine which is available in network. It's not mandatory server 2012, 2016, or Windows 10 operating system. Any machine which is available in network. Let me explain. So in that case, it is because in my environment is I created one ESXi host in the workstation, and then we just created server 2012 in the workstation, and on graphical interface, I created Windows 10. So I can use either Windows 10 or Windows 2012 then? Yep. The usage of vCenter server installation, how you can perform the task. Just for example, we have a one ESXi host. This one is our ESXi host. And we establish a one domain controller. This is server machine. And one Windows 10 computer also available. Each and every machine are communicating to each other. Both are connected to each other. ESXi host IP address is 192.168.1.13 This is our domain computer and this is one is our Windows 10 client. What you need to do, you just need to download vCenter Server Appliance It's a ISO format. The capacity is 3.71 GB. That's it. You need to download on your Windows 10 and install. Proceed to install. It will ask you the destination. The meaning of destination is ESXi host. And that time you need to provide the IP address of your ESXi. So you can say that Windows 10 is working just like a mediator. It works just like a mediator, medium. Although or I could have used Windows 12 as well. Yes. And it will be installed to the ESXi host that you established. I'm doing same activity. ESXi host which is available. This is Windows 10. I'm just going to open VCSA installation. Double click. Follow the procedure, install, 
next i accept next next type the ip address of your esxi that's it 13 <coughs> type the username so username should be a a d m i n i s t r a t o r at the rate v sphere dot local and provide the password password should be a complex and minimum 14 character required administrator at the rate vsphere dot local this is the username sorry you must need to provide the root and password of your esxi host password of your 13 ip address yes which is successfully approved we want to install type the name vcsa 6.5 this is the name of uh, our sir just just proceed with vcsa and now you can type a password Next, <laughs> this is really important panel. Uh, you must need to provide the storage information so in our case I'm just going to use local storage which is contain a 248 capacity gig of space make sure you must need to enable the thin disk mode next provide the system detail like as uh, the system name VCSA IP address as per your requirement so I'm just going to provide the IP address 1.250 you can use any name subnet mask 255.255.255.0 gateway 192.168.1.1 you can select any name of for the IP address DNS address 192.168.1.15 you must need to provide the DNS address related to your domain controller so our domain IP address is 15 that's it no need to make any changes vcsa.cloud.com 250 is our vCenter server IP address that we are plan to configure 1.1 is gateway 1.15 is our domain name next everything is clear ready to install it will take up to uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes so I'm sorry to ask you this again but I'm really confused now that why I have to install Windows 2020 server in workstation and not in the ESXi. I'm trying to understand the infrastructure now, like what we have done so far. Hello? Uh, 
Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Let me explain you again. If you remember Sorry, like on day one, really? on day one, let me explain you. On day one, we discuss okay. about the types of virtualization. Is it correct? Yes. Hypervisor type one and hypervisor type two. So why it is important to create your uh, server 2012 in separate machine? For example, this is our ESXi host, okay? Mm -hmm. As we know that ESXi host is a type of bare metal virtualization or hypervisor type 2, type 1. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Hypervisor type 1 is a VMware workstation. For VMware Workstation, you must need to install at least Windows 10, R7, R8 operating system. Is it correct? Then you can install the VMware Workstation. Why we know, uh, why VMware never suggests to configure our server machine on our ESXi host for the vCenter server environment? See. If you create your domain, for example, you are planning to create your domain in your ESXi. Right? This is your server computer, server 2012. And you install the Active Directory Domain Services, AD Domain Services. Think about, if any problem occurred with ESXi, we will lose our domain. Is it correct? Yes. That is why, you must need to configure your uh, domain in base machine. So we don't have a multiple computer. So we consider our workstation as a base machine. The workstation that we are considering as a base machine. That's why we need to install domain machine on the workstation, not in ESXi. This is the actual reason. And my Windows 10 is always installed on ESXi, and that's on the on the left hand side square you draw, right? No problem. Client operating system you can install. Not an issue with client. Yeah. Actually, the issue with domain controller because domain responsible to manage lots of things: name resolution, DNS, vCenter server. That is why we must need to proceed and install our domain controller separately. And once we have this environment set up, we can use either Windows 10 or Windows 12 to set up the vCenter. No matter, because uh, uh, you can use the operating system only for the mediator, because it's still we are using Windows 10. But unfortunately, our ES vCenter server are, uh, uh, installation happen over a ESXi 6.5. 6 so in, in that case, I can even use my local machine, like my laptop. For this task as well because they all are in the same network right? yes 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 you should be use your local Office machine channel, yes. and both machine are communicating to each other yeah because i should be able to pin windows 12 machine from my local machine too then great no problem it should work right now i'm asking you like it, it will work, work. yep right? yep it should work Fahad, please. Yeah, yesterday you just provide the two links from one drive. Right? Correct. Can anything just from the one drive? Uh, you're talking about the PDF? Yes. Uh, let me resend you again. No worry, please. Let me resend. Mm, okay. You just share file, right? Share file, yes. Okay, Sherman, just I try to get this from your uh, wardrobe, but I, I couldn't. Let me assign. The, uh, I, I think you have to share under my uh, email address.
and Manjit, remember I was asking about the thick and thin poisoning and stuff like that, like lazy, eager. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Have we talked about that or there is something coming? So I don't know. Uh, I think we discussed in our uh, uh, virtual machine creation. If you are unable to understand, I can explain you again. No problem. Because I watched the video too, but I don't think... I, I don't I didn't find any section. No problem. Let me explain you again. No worry. In provision, thick provision, lazy, and thick provision eagerly, these three different methods can help us to manage the storage. For example, we have a one share storage with capacity of 100 gig. And you want to create a virtual machine and assign a uh, our storage, 100 gig storage. So we have a three different way to assign. One is thin provision. Second one is thick lazy. And fourth one is thick eagerly. Is it correct? Yes. Okay, try to understand about the actual concept. If you proceed with thin provision, right? So what happened? You selected 100 gig space to your virtual machine, the uh, virtual machine that you are trying to create on your ESF site. Total space is 100 gig. But unfortunately, you install Windows 10 in VM and it consume only 25 gig of space after the installation of your windows 10 machine so what happened in case of thin provision it just consumed 25 gig space it just consumed 25 gig of space because as per your requirement you just consume only 25 gig space in your virtual machine, so it will be occupied in the back end of shared storage. Now, next, if you just upload a 5 gig data, like you just uh, download a 5 gig of uh, file, so then it increases 5 gig mode. means you have a remaining 80 sorry 70 gig space free and you can use this space to create a another virtual machine you can use the same space to create another vms that is why most of organization prefer to use thin provision to save the space is it clear please confirm now, what happened in thick provision lazily? So, in case of lazily, if you proceed with thick provision lazy and you selected a 100 gig space for your virtual machine, immediately it will consume the entire space. It will consume the entire space, although you haven't installed anything. Immediately it consumes the entire space and cannot support fault tolerance. It cannot support fault tolerance and migration. If you create your virtual machine with the thick lazy, you are unable to configure fault tolerance for VM. You are unable to migrate your virtual machine from one location to another location. From VMware ESXi to uh, cloud technology, you are unable to transfer, you are unable, unable to share it. <laughs> Please let me know if you are able to understand. Yep. <coughs> and thick eagerly what happened in case of thick eagerly it worked just like a thick lazy means consume the entire space immediately no matter you just uploaded 25 gig space but it support the ft and migration in that case the recommended is thin and if we have to go thick i think the it, best one should be eagerly right? exactly because you if you want to save the space you don't want to uh, means waste is the state, uh, storage. You must need to proceed with thin, thin provision, lazy. Thin provision, so it's not lazy. The only, only reason I'm asking is because I sometimes expand the 
disk space. So we have a bunch of terminal servers and mm -hmm. VMs, right? Correct. On the data store. And when I expand that storage, I was told by my seniors that I should be going thick because we want to keep our eye on data store as well. So we don't want to just do like everything thin. And then at the end we realize, we won't even realize until we are at the critical level of storage that we are out of storage, right? So, so we always try to do thick eagerly and I think I know why now. So mostly we need to proceed with thin provision because it will save the space, right? Yeah, like in fact, in, in, in test environment, I think it makes sense for sure. Correct. Now it is in progress. It will take time because uh, RPM is just is installing. So this particular file take much time to install it. So guys, can we take a small break? Just a small bit. Sure. Okay, so we'll connect in next uh, 10 minutes. Just take a tea break. Can you hear me? Yes. We just completed the first state, right? We need to proceed for the second state as well. How we can do that? Click continue, no need to do anything. Next. And uh, you need to proceed, no need to make any changes, just need to proceed with uh, synchronized timing with NTP server. Next. Sorry, synchronized timing with ESXi host. SSH should, should be enabled. Next again. You need to provide the username and password. SSO username and password. It always administrator. A D M I N I S T R A T O R at the rate B sphere dot local. Type the password. Should be a complex, no need to do anything. We successfully created the SSO. Next. VCSA dot cloud dot com. Oh, sorry. Need to proceed with existing. Our uh, VCM server appliance. VSphere dot local. Provide the password. So in this case, our domain is cloud.com, but our domain for vCenter is different, vSphere.local? Yeah, it's a different. Click next. This is entire information that you need to copy. It's a 250 uh, IP address of our ESXi uh, vCenter server. Click finish. It will take, it will take again 5 to 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Once our vCenter server is ready, we will access and uh, try to set up our, uh, what we can say that, multiple ESXi. Uh, vcsa.cloud.com
don't know what happened. We are just getting error. Let me check it again. Just give me one minute. Let me install it again. We need to install it again. I actually some issue with our vCenter server. Let me remove it and install it again. Uh, Kishan, have you installed domain controller server machine? No. I just uh, got the machine started now. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I have to do is add rules and features. Next. Next. I have to install AD, uh, remote something. Right now. It is called remote desktop service. Yes. No, it's a feature. So, uh, remote server administration tools I have to install, right? Uh, Active Active Domain Services, not remote server. I think it didn't work without ADDS. You need to install ADDS. Okay, installing right now. I need .NET Framework 3.5 with it, right? Or 2.4.5. I'll just go and install whatever default is there. I think I have to spend a lot of time because I still have a lot of confusion. Like I don't feel confident, to be honest, for some reason. In case of domain? No, like this totally is exciting. You just need to give a time at least uh, to understand. You need to implement the services by self and try to understand each and everything. Yeah, I will. What I have started is watching video from day one again and then just trying to follow the practical as I go.
Can I share my screen so I can show you? Yeah, sure. Please share your screen. 